Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about how to write some code in Python to import all of the modules recursively in a folder. And I've needed to do this a few times, so I'll show you some examples of why I would do this at the end, uh, but I'm just going to show you how to do it first. All right, so for this, we are going to set up a package, and we're using the word package here to mean a folder containing an init.py. The word package is super overloaded, so it means a whole bunch of things, uh, but we are going to make just a package directory. We're going to put some modules in it. Uh, the init.py is actually important, and I will show you why later. init.py, b.py. And just to demonstrate the recursive part of this, we're going to also make um, a subdirectory. I don't know why I jumped a, b, d, but whatever. <laughs> Touch package slash d slash uh init.py f.py skipped e as well oh well uh so you can see we now have a package of or a, a tree of python files here and maybe one of our tasks requires that we need to import all of these and uh, execute them fortunately there is this module built into python called package util and it has two functions which are useful for doing this one of these is log packages uh, and the other is iter modules. So the, the main difference between the two is iter modules will not recurse. So generally you want to use walk packages unless you have some other special use case. Um, so almost always you want to use walk packages. And the two arguments to this are a little bit confusing. So I'm going to, or I guess the three arguments. So I'm going to go over these arguments and show you basically what you want to do always. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why you would ever use it in any other way. I don't know why the API is in my opinion, kind of bad. Um, all right, so let's talk about the first argument. First argument is path. Now you might think that this is an on-disk path, and unfortunately it is not. Usually what you put into this is the double under path attribute. And if we, let's actually just make a little Python file, and we are going to import package. This is the one that we want to import all of the stuff under it. And just to get started, I'm going to print package.path. Now, by name, you would probably expect this to be a string, but it is not. It is a list of strings, and I don't particularly understand the nuances of it. I believe it's to support multiple different locations for subsource and, and namespace packages, but I'm not really sure about that. But anyway, we take this uh, double under path, and we are going to use package util, and that is the standard library module, and it is going to yield out these module info objects. Where does it say that? Module info objects. Uh, so I'm going to show you just by passing the path argument. It's not going to do what we want. Uh, mod info in package util dot walk packages. Is it walk packages or is it walk modules? Walk packages. Okay, cool. Uh, package dot path as the first argument. Um, I should probably work on the other screen so that you can see what I'm doing. And if we run this, oh, we need to print the mod info. Uh, first, I'm going to do the tree of modules just to remind us. And if we run this, you'll see that we only got, oh, we'll run it once more so you get this. Uh, you'll see that we only got three modules here, uh, despite, you know, it missed this f.py here. Uh, it only got us a, b, and d. And these modules have the wrong name. This is actually supposed to be package.a because it's a submodule of this. So the, the name's wrong and it stopped recursing. And that's because we didn't specify the prefix argument. You always, always, always need to specify the prefix argument for this. Otherwise, it's going to stop at package boundaries because it, it can't import a module named D. That module doesn't exist. It's package.d. Uh, so what you need to do is you always want to uh, specify the prefix argument here and you almost always specify it like this package.name with a dot after it. That's just that's just how you have to use this function. <laughs> I think it's really annoying, but um, that's that's just how it works. Uh, so if we run this now, you can see that we now get uh, we now get d.f out as well as uh, you know it recurses, and these have the proper module name now. Uh, the other parts of module info I don't find that useful. I usually don't bother with whatever this is, and well I know what this is, but you <laughs> you don't need it, uh, and I usually don't care whether it's a package or not. So usually what I do is I just uh, ignore those two parts. This is a named tuple, so we can just get the name out directly uh, like this. 
That'll just give us the name of this package, and that's what we really care about. So you can see we now have a list of all of the module names inside here. Oh, still in this print from before. We'll get rid of that. Cool. So now that we have the module names, we can do whatever we want to need to uh, whatever we want to do with those. Usually that means importing them. And I did a video on the built-in we're about to use, which is double under import. Um, and usually you'll write a little bit of a statement like this. So uh, importing name. And you can see that we're able to run this and import all of those modules. Now on its own, that's probably not that useful. And, and I'm going to show you some use cases that I've used this for though. Uh, so one example where this might be useful is if you're writing some sort of test runner, for instance, like you know, PyTest or Testify or any sort of other Python unit test library, you probably want to import all of the tests before you run them. PyTest, of course, doesn't use this because PyTest has its own idea of how module layouts should work and init.pys aren't necessary and a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh yeah, I guess I should talk about that first. So this only works for traditional package packages. It does not work for namespace packages. Uh, and that's because with namespace packages, you don't really know whether they are actual model namespaces or not, because they're just folders. So if I did a uh, package slash foo and touched package slash foo slash bar.py, and we run this script again, you'll see that it's not going to run this, even though we can actually do import package.foo.bar. And that's because package.foo is a namespace package. It doesn't have an init.py, and so the package utilities don't know how to iterate over it. Because technically it's not a package, but it is. I don't know. Namespace packages are weird. I like them, I want them, I want to use them, but they're really poorly supported, so I would recommend avoiding them. Um, but yeah, so walk packages does not do namespace packages. And so that's one reason that it doesn't work for PyTest and why PyTest has its own custom discovery. Uh, another use case that I've used this for is to make a plugin system and have uh, those plugins just be local to my particular distribution and import them all at once. One example of this is actually my chatbot that I use on Twitch. So this has a, I believe it's data.py. So this has a bunch of uh, data objects and a decorator to register them. And so I use this for callbacks for chat messages, commands, and that sort of thing. And then um, I use this little helper here to trigger all of the imports of all of the packages. And you can see this is almost exactly the same code as we saw before. <laughs> There's a type error, or a type ignore, because MyPy doesn't yet understand the double under path attribute, but that's fine. And I specify all my plugins inside of this plugin directory here. So these all just kind of live on their own. Uh, they're registered magically through these command decorators and get discovered that way. Uh, PyUpgrade, a tool that I wrote, actually works very similarly. Uh, so if we look at PyUpgrade slash data, you'll see that there is a register decorator. And eventually we do that same plugin import. This is actually, I believe, identical code to what, <laughs> what my bot does. And then PyUpgrade has a series of plugins that live in here. And so they they register themselves using uh, using these. Uh, yeah, so you can see that there's like a, a register decorator which allows you to you know, write plugins. And imports are side effects, so this, this module doesn't do anything on its own until it gets imported. Uh, but that's another use case that I've used for this bit of code. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.